Well, don't we have a pretty little block starting? A couple thoughts I had while I was sewing this that I thought I would share with you. One, something I love about this pattern, it's, it's very forgiving and if you don't get your points lined up to absolute perfection, you're still gonna get a really nice looking, really aligned, uh, it will appear to be perfectly aligned um, finished block. So don't overthink that you might have the teeniest little spot on your points not matched. That is okay and there is luckily nothing that we're going to end up having to perfectly match to give this block its finished look. Uh, the second thought I had is when you're ironing, we are using some skinny seams, and so I'm sure many of you know this, but I um, always like to mention a few ironing tips. One, heat press your seam, so when it's still closed, heat press that seam. It will help set it, and it will allow you to open the seam and iron it, Well, and it will stay a little bit more straight for you, and we don't want, you know, we don't want our seams to be wonky. The other thing we don't want to do is be pushing and pushing, um, we want to just put our iron on and let it sit, bring it down, let it sit. That's how you get a nice straight line versus shoving it or, or going back and forth. We don't want to do that. We just want to um, heat set and then nice and straight along and move your iron with you. I like to iron my seams open. I've done a few mysteries now and a big thank you to everyone who participates in them. I am always just astonished. I'm just a little quilter at home, but um, people seem to really enjoy them and I get tons and tons of phone calls and questions about ironing. I iron my seams open, it's how I was taught. You can iron your seams to whatever direction you would like to. I don't put any information in the pattern about ironing because as you can see, everything's nesting anyway and there isn't anything that's pushing up against the other and that I need to be sure it's going to line up and, and then nest. And nesting, when I, I say nesting, that's generally when you have something that's up against another seam and you really want them to just push right up against each other. You can kind of feel that groove when you're ironing and or even when you're going to piece it together and you can tell that it's matched. But with, there's nothing like that here happening, so it's we're good. And, it, and that's another reason why this quilt is kind of beginner friendly for as involved as it looks like it is. It looks like we really worked hard and we've been sewing for days. So our next step is going to be another sashing, but before we do that, let's reference our pattern. And I don't have the final pattern printed, so mine are just still uh, right off my printer. But as you can see, we're going to square this block up to eight and a half by eight and a half. And let me show you, I'm gonna move my, move my um, ruler over here and I'm gonna show you how we can do that without, without trying to, having to measure the center, four and a half out, four and a half out. Uh, we, don't, we don't really need to take the time to do that. So we can, we can look at our ruler and let me find my one here. So on this ruler, the the numbers one, this is an and this ruler has an extra half an inch on the sides. So I like to start with this side, which is there's a one on there, but it's it's the background or the lighter colored numbers. But what I'm going to do is go to four and a fourth, and I'm going to go to four and a fourth. And as you, let me see if I can get that in the light, but I put a dot there already. That's my four and a fourth dot. So. I'm gonna, and it's right on, as you can see, it's on a 45 degree line. So I'm gonna lay this down. I'm gonna get my four and a fourth dot right in the center where all four of these come to a point. And I want my 45 degree line to be running right down the diagonal of the, the halfway between this, in this square. I know, I'm, I'm probably like using words that you guys are thinking. She's a wackadoodle, but Anyway, you're gonna use your 45 degree line at the four and a fourth mark. And now I can trim this off. And when I spin this around, I can line it up to the eight and a half and trim what's left off and it will be perfectly squared up. Um, you might wanna see that happen. So 
Let's see, let me get my mat. Hang on with me for one second and I can actually show you without having to move my camera. So let's do this right here. If you are a person who struggles with trimming, another thing that I was taught and I just think is so important, if you cannot use your cutting mat and rely on your ruler for your measuring, you will be so much more accurate. Your cutting mat ha kind of has, it has lines for measurements, but they can be kind of thick. And that is, that's a matter of an eighth of an inch and an eighth of an inch times 30 seams is, it's gonna add up to your quilt being off at the end of the day. So using your actual ruler is always a good plan. So I've got my dot on my four and a fourth and I'm making sure my 45 is running down the diagonal of my, qu of my quilt block. And I'm gonna take this side off. And I built a little extra in because I'm not a perfect sewer. And so I didn't want you to be stressing about your block being a teeny bit um, small or too big. And I'm telling you that there's no trimming, so it's stressing you out. So I like to just build a little extra in. There's nothing wrong with doing a little trimming and making sure that we're all set and done at the end of the day. So now I'm, I'm at my dot. I spun my fabric. I'm, li I'm lined up along my diagonal. And my diagonal isn't just perfection, but it won't matter because we're going to add a sashing around and we're going to do this again. So now I'm trimmed to eight and a half. And let me see, this is how my block's been sitting. And I'm ready to go. So our next step will be to put a sashing on again. We're gonna get one on here. Actually, we're gonna put it this way. I like to match my, if I, if I put the small side on here, I would put the small side on again. And then I will put my other side just like this. And we're going to be repeating this folded corner technique, but I think I'm gonna come back and show it to you again after I get this on, just in case you're watching all these videos ahead and you wanna see that take shape um, in a little bit more detail. So I'll be right back. 